We were talking in the break about statins, and so many people are prescribed statins. It's for cholesterol, right? Right. Well, I mean, unfortunately, that's what it's prescribed for. It really should be prescribed to prevent heart attack. Okay. Uh, because, you know, cholesterol doesn't necessarily cause heart attacks, but unfortunately, we, we lean on that, and that's the only thing we do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I referenced a study. Now, this is in, this is in rodents, uh, so we always have to be careful. It's not a human study, but we knew that statins have an increased risk of affecting muscles, okay. causing muscle pain, causing muscle cramps. Lots of people have issues with this. They stop the statin medication, and their muscles get better. Oh. This, this rodent study showed that the mice who were on statins had significantly more oxidative damage in their muscles the more they exercised. So it seems now that maybe the statins affect people who exercise more um, versus ones who don't. And of course, we want to be exercising. Right, that's what I was just thinking. So, you know, that adds to now the FDA coming out and saying, yes, we recognize that there is a de definite uh, connection with statin drugs and cognitive decline, mental uh, decline. Um, and we know now that there's also a connection between statin drugs and diabetes. So, I, you know, I'm not here to say nobody should be on a statin. Sure. Because there actually is some, some, some benefit to them, sure. but in certain circumstances. We shouldn't be painting with a broad brush. We need to stop handing this stuff out for an elevated cholesterol level. We need to start having a discussion about your personal risk of heart attack, Okay. how you can improve that through your lifestyle, and if you can't improve it through your lifestyle, if there's a genetic component or you have a past history of diabetes or heart attack, mm -hmm. statins then have to be in the discussion, but only when the benefit of the statin in lowering your risk Mm -hmm. outweighs these side effects. And the FDA is now recognizing that there are significant side effects to statins. I mean, there was a time where it was, hey, let's just put statins in the water and make it so much nicer. Hmm. Uh, w I mean, definitely, definitely don't want to do that. I mean, we've got we've to gotta have these discussions. And unfortunately, time is an issue. Yeah. You know, a doctor doesn't spend a lot of time with patients to have right. this discussion. It's, your cholesterol is too high take this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and even more unfortunate than that is when we make that decision on a total cholesterol number, which actually relies on the HDL, which is good cholesterol. So mm. I see a lot of people come to me and they say, I can't believe my cholesterol is high. I'm, I'm distressed. What do I do about it? And their total cholesterol is high because their good cholesterol is high. So they really need to be looking at the LDL, the bad cholesterol level. Need to look at the LDL, need to also look at triglycerides. Triglycerides is based on how much processed food and sugar that you eat. Ah, uh, okay. The higher the triglycerides, the more likely your LDL is going to be damaged LDL that's going to build plaque. So it's hmm. the big picture. Mm -hmm. It's doing a risk stratification. Uh, there's a calculation you can do. You can do it yourself online with your own numbers. Framingham risk score. Okay. Find out what your 10-year risk of heart attack and stroke is, if that's very low, I think you implement the lifestyle strategies and monitor things. Shouldn't be jumping to statins as the first line.